Hello there, Grateful Gang. Lauren here, the Gratitude Addict. Welcome to Gratefully Living the Chronic Life. I come to you every Thursday at this time to bring you an episode with various topics pertaining to living our best lives with gratitude, intention, and finding true joy and purpose um, in a life of struggle. And, and most of us do struggle with one thing or another. I am the founder and admin of a group called Attitude of Gratitude with Chronic Pain, which I will show down here. There it is. Um, you do not need to have chronic physical pain to be a member of this group. It is open to anybody who struggles with any kind of pain, whether it's emotional, physical, spiritual, mental, financial, whatever. We, we work with tools in our group uh, with things such as primarily gratitude, but also intention, um, you know, daily readings, affirmations, intentions, things like that to, um, you know, just try to give us tools to try to walk through life a little bit easier, gentler, um, you know, so we can move forward and not stay stuck in our problems. So I welcome you all to join the group if you are not a member. Many of you who are watching tonight most definitely are, and hello there, Grateful Gang. Um, we are live, for those of you watching on a Thursday night, and we are an interactive broadcast. I love, love, love to take questions and comments from our live viewers, so please... Okay, I was just telling Sandy, my guest, <laughs> that I have been known to kick myself out of my own broadcast. I think it's a first that I've actually kicked myself out of the broadcast before the guest even came. So that's a first. But anyway, what was I saying? We love to take questions and comments from viewers during the show. So please um, feel free. I try to get all comments and questions on the screen. I had something to share, but now I need to get it back. Bear with me one second. Um here we go. Okay. So if you're watching from inside Attitude of Gratitude with Chronic Pain, um, you want to make sure that you grant StreamYard, which is this platform, um, permission to use your name and photo. If you want your comment to show up on the screen, um, or if you want your name and your photo. And we are giving away a copy of my guest's book tonight. It's an amazing book by Sandy Scarlatta, Happiness Solved. So if you want to win a copy, you need to make sure, if only if you're watching from inside Attitude of Gratitude with Chronic Pain, just make sure you go to StreamYard.com backslash Facebook, hit that blue button, and you'll be good. If you're watching from anywhere else, you do not need to worry about it. Um, and before I bring Sandy on, we're going to talk about forgiveness and happiness and her wonderful book. Um, next week, we have Chaz Newton, Chaz Smith Newton. She's going to be talking to us about um, movement, which is an episode I've wanted to do for the past um, two years plus about um, because a lot of us that are watching, I know, live with chronic pain and illness and Movement is one of those words that people are like, whoa, you know, no, I can't, I can't, I can't. Well, Chaz lives with chronic pain herself. And so I've been wanting to have somebody on who's going to talk to us about various ways that you can still move your body despite living with um, any kind of physical limitation. So she's going to be on with us next week. She has a great po podcast called Our Power Within. Um, and she teaches classes called A Dose of Movement. So she will be on next week. So without further ado, let me bring on my friend and our guest for this week, Sandy Scarlatta. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Lauren. Thank you so much. I've been looking forward to this since December. December, <laughs> yes. So um, Sandy and I met, we met for the first time in December and our, our paths have crossed in various ways since then. Um, I've was fortunate enough to be on your podcast called Happiness Solved, which is also the name of your book. Um, and then I asked you, because I, I love your podcast and your message so much, I asked you if you would be an endorser for my my book and a professional endorser for my last book on my Amazon page. And you so graciously 
agreed to do that. So it's, and then you were supposed to be on a couple months ago and I canceled on you. Um, so thank you for, for being here and for bearing with me through that. No worries. I was supposed to be on when I was on vacation in Hawaii and I was yeah. like, yeah, I'm on vacation. Let's just reschedule. No worries. I, and I knew you were on vacation. You had told me and it, it was like, it was a week gang. It was just a week. And I'm like, no, no. Big deal. I really like, I hate, I don't like canceling on guests. I, I really like to stay true, you know, to things. I'm like, but I know she's in Hawaii. She's not going to care. And she, you know, she didn't. But you know, <laughs> it's so funny because so many people, when they have to reschedule with me, they're like, but you're a happiness coach. So I'm sure you'll be okay with that. Like, of course <laughs> I'm a happiness coach. Like life happens. Life does happen. No big deal. You just so, yeah. gotta, I, I always say I'm a surfer girl, you know, I just ride the waves. Ride the waves. I, I talk ride about that all the time too. Riding the waves is a lot better than having them crash down on you, isn't it? And that can happen if we're not stay, if we're so stuck in our ways yes. and, you know, saying, no, I'm not going to change. And then they just crash down on you. But surfing is a much better way to go. And the, you actually have waves on the cover of this wonderful, wonderful book, which came out uh, last year it's called Happiness mm -hmm. Solved climbing 100 steps and we'll talk about what that those 100 steps are but um you know what i see a lot of comments coming in um so happy to learn about happiness good so sandy's known as america's happiness coach um so ha america's happiness coach is here with gratitude addict so we're hey everybody if you do want to win a copy of oh did i just mute myself no i can hear you can you, I've never kicked myself out of the broadcast before the guest arrived. That's a first. Hi, Linda. <laughs> glad you're here. Um, if you want to win a copy, you just have to write hashtag gratitude any time during the broadcast tonight in the comments, and you'll be entered to win. Um, so, Sandy, you have, like, an incredible background. First of all, you there's so much I want to talk to you about your background, but you were you made it into the ice capades. And so for a kid that grew up in the set, well, you, you auditioned and you were accepted. I auditioned. I was accepted. Oh, I, I think you're on mute. No, I'm not showing I'm on mute. Can you hear me? Huh. Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. I wonder if it's my, um, my beats. Shoot. Should I take these out? Getting nothing. Okay. Better. Yep. Yep. Yeah. For some ha for some reason, my um, my power beats shifted. So oh, okay. I should be. Yeah. Okay. We're betting a thousand. So for a kid that grew up in the 70s, the ice capades was it, man. It was, uh, it. <laughs> it was the only thing I had plans for. Like, I never wanted to go to college. College was never on my radar. I was just going to be in the ice capades. That was it. That was all I wanted. Yeah. So yeah. you began, well, I don't want, going back in your story, and you, you talk about this in your book, you you grew up on on a, a river, which is the 100 steps up to your house, and it would freeze mm -hmm. over in the in the winter, and mm -hmm. that's where you taught you learned how to ice skate, right? I didn't learn how to skate on the river, oh, okay. but um, no, my my three brothers all played ice hockey, and my father coached it. So this was in the early, oh, this was like 1970. I was five years old in 1970. Oh, wow. And I wanted to play ice hockey because that's what my brothers did. I was a tomboy, 100% tomboy. You know, I, I had really, really long hair. Every day my mom would put my hair in pigtails. I would pull them out. By the time I got to the bus stop, it was just like, you know, hair all in the face. <laughs> I was just like such a tomboy. And I wanted to play ice hockey. And my, my father was like, girls don't play ice hockey. Like, no. <laughs> so they made, me, they made me put on a tutu and I took ice skating <laughs> like, I don't want to wear a tutu you know? <laughs> but um but yeah but that's how I got started in it and just became it was my escape I had so much tragedy and trauma um growing up and being on the ice is such an amazing escape 
it's like that with anything that you, any passion that you have. Anything that puts you like in a state of flow, right? And for you, it's ice skating. Exactly. It's just that state of flow, whether it's writing or art or crafts or like anything that you can do. Like there's times when we need to escape and it's totally normal and it's okay. You just want to make sure it's a healthy escape, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just got to be sure. healthy, <laughs> right? I mean, we could all, you know, escape with a bottle or drugs. Yeah. Or, no, no. You you want a healthy escape, and it's it's yeah. really good for you because it you need something to take your mind off of everything and have that focus directed towards something that you're passionate in. Right. Yeah. So for me, as a kid, that was just you know everything to me. I bet. And yeah. you did have, like you mentioned, you had tragedy from a, a pretty young age. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. Yeah. So like <clears throat> my, my biological father died when I was 18 months old. And unfortunately, he was very abusive to my mom and my older siblings. And he would come home drunk and beat them. He's pulled a, he pulled a gun on my mother. Oh, my God. Um, and was shooting at the ceiling. And I think he had another woman on his arm or something like that. Like just crazy stuff. Yeah. And he, he died um, and left my mother a widow at the age of 26 with four children. And um, she always says it was a blessing, you know, that she, she was always leaving him. She would just throw everybody in the car and leave him. And then he would always find her. And she would say, you know, if, if he didn't die, I would still be running from him. You know? Oh, and that's what she said when I was a kid. But um, so, yeah, so then she married my father, my stepfather, but he raised me since I was three and he was my father for 47 years of my life. And I'm so grateful for that. But he was a hard, he was strict Catholic. Yes, I am a recovering Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> right? I'm always like, I'm a recovering Catholic because it's just, you know, this upbringing that yeah, I don't know how it is today. I don't care, I, you know, to each his own. But for me, yeah. it was not a great experience. Mm-hmm. And um, when I was 12 years old, my older brother tragically died while serving in the U.S. Army. And so that really shaped the rest of my youth. Um, you know, my mom, you know, I've never held it against her in any way, shape or form, but she kind of went into a depression. And I don't even talk about this in my book because I, you know, my mom is still alive great I'm so grateful and I take care of her and I am like so grateful that I can take care of my mother and she's 81 years old and I'm just so grateful because I have so many of my girlfriends who lost their mom you know they don't have their mom anymore and right and so I'm like so grateful for that and um but but she wasn't there you know and it's not her fault I mean it wasn't until my son was born in the year 2000 and I'm holding him and all of a sudden, it was like within 10 minutes of him being born, it was like this immense fear of losing him. Mm. And, the, and the love was just something you never experience until you're a mom. Right. 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 And, um, and it was scary. But it was then that I, I really came to grips and came to terms with my mom. And I was like, she did the best she could. You know, like 26, because if you don't four kids, you know, well, and then her son died. Right. right. My, my right. brother was 19. And it's like, until you have a child of your own, you can't possibly like, I only had a smidgen of what she must have went through. Right? Yeah. Just a tiny, tiny, because, because you can't even wrap your mind around the thought of losing your child. No. And your brother it, died pretty tragically. He, he it, fell out of a window in your, your home. Right. He was in, in Germany in the army and he, he actually laid on the ground for like four or five hours before. Oh, I thought it was in your him. home. Oh, so we fell out. Oh, wow. Yeah, he was in, he was in Germany and fell out of the window and oh. um, he laid there for about four or five hours before anybody even noticed that he was oh. falling. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah and, and just dealing with that, you know, guilt and we're talking about forgiveness today, tonight, you know, the, must, the guilt that, must have overcome your mother, even though she had nothing to do with it, must have been horrific. Right. Yeah. I yeah. mean, just, yeah. So it wasn't until my son was born that I was like, oh my gosh, like, I can't even imagine what she must, must have gone through. And so, yeah. you know, I've just always looked at her with so much grace and compassion because it was just 
such a huge deal, you know, yes. that nobody yes. wants to go through. No, you know, no. Yeah. And, and then you're, you know, later on in, in life. Well, I mean, there, there's so many amazing parts of your story. You went back and got your bachelor's degree like 35 mm -hmm. years after you graduated high school. Right. Am I right about that? I like, did. You're really just amazing. And, and, you know, the resilience that you go through and what I talk to people about every week is, you know, building resilience and trying to pivot from these roadblocks that we hit, you know, these cards that were dealt with in life. And it could be chronic physical pain and illness an injury, the loss of a, a spouse, a child, you know, everybody's got some kind of tragedy and, and trauma in their life. So we can either like stay stuck in our pain. And I'm not saying we can't deal with our pain. We have to deal with our pain to, and walk through it, not skirt around it. Right. But I, I feel that we need to walk through it and, and pivot and find another, you know, solve solve and not solve our happiness but you know find a way an alternate way to get there and that's what your your book so beautifully talks about and you talk about gratitude quite a bit and you have a, a chapter in here called the f word um which is our topic for tonight it's very clever it's forgiveness not that f word you guys don't don't go there um but talking about you know forgiveness being a real key towards happiness right mm -hmm. yes i actually believe that you can't have one without the other because if you're holding on to any sort of bitterness towards another person or towards yourself happiness and bitterness cannot coexist they can't, they can't. now no. you can have periods of happiness which is great because happiness is a journey it's not a destination it's a journey right. um but forgiveness is, is the most important tool. I actually, my very first book was a novel for young adults. Um, it was published in 2009. The second book was finished in 2010 and my publisher went out of business, so it was never published. Oh, but that book, that novel, I won, I was a finalist in two book awards, which was incredible because it was my first attempt at, at nonfiction or fiction rather. And, um, so, so what I've done now is I've put the two books together and I'm going to finish it because it was supposed to be five books. So I'm going to finish it and that hopefully, I'm not going to be out this year, obviously, because I'm not finished, um, but maybe by next year it'll be out. But the, the underlying theme in that book, and there was a saying that I use, which is for give, for peace. Oh, I like that. And, and I had it on my license plate. I had t-shirts. I still have really? t-shirts and stuff. I, I may actually put them up on my website. Here's the, you know, <laughs> the you know, retro t-shirts or whatever. <laughs> but, um, but that's, that's the gist of it. If you're feeling any, anything but peace in your heart, there's someone that you need to forgive. And chances are it's yourself. Yes. For sure. Um, we, I've had on, I don't know, do you know Dr. Carrie Howells? She's, she's been on the show Not a couple sure. of times. She wrote this great book about resentments and gratitude called Untangling Ooh. You. Um, she's from Australia. She's a resentment expert. So we talk a lot about forgiveness mm -hmm. and a lot of people in my audience, and, and I know you and I spoke about this over email, that forgiving ourselves um you know, a lot of us, we, we don't forgive friends for ditching us. We don't forgive doctors who maybe botched a surgery. You know, there's this whole variety of things. But forgiving ourselves is a really, really big one mm -hmm. um, and, and a tough hurdle to get over, right? So what do you tell people when it comes to forgiving yourself? How, how do you go about doing that? Well, prior to my Hawaii trip, because um, I learned something, I was reintroduced to something in Hawaii that I'll, I'll talk about in a second. Um, it was really just a practice of, you know, when, when these thoughts come up, when we realize that our mind is shaming us, our mind is making us wrong, you know, all those little things that we, you know, you say to yourself, you know, I forgive, I forgive myself for X, Y, Z. I love myself. You know, it's more the self-talk, the dialogue that, you know, and just repeating it over and over. Forgiveness is a daily practice. It's not something mm -hmm. just like happiness. 
like gratitude, like gratitude, you're yeah. never going to master it. Right. It's a practice. Every single day, you got to practice forgiveness. You need to work on your happiness, choose happiness, you know, focus on your gratitude, you know, all of those things, you know, acceptance, trust, all of it. It's a daily practice. And so when you're having these thoughts, because it's going to happen, it's, it, we're, it's wired in our DNA, the fight or flight right. that we used to go through thousands of years ago, where it was like, you know, you got a, a saber toothed tiger or a tiger <laughs> that's about to chase us. You got to get out of here. Yeah. Right. Well, now we don't have those to deal with, but what we do have is that voice in our head that's trying to protect us. It's right. all about, because our mind wants to protect us from feeling hurt or feeling rejection or feeling yeah. pain. So what happens is, is that voice, you can call it whatever you want. People have called it all sorts of things. Um, the little Freddie effer on your shoulder, you know, the <laughs> angel devil. I mean, it's just, you have that voice that, that tries to protect you. And you need to understand that it's normal. You're always going to have that voice. It's not going to go away. Right. I mean, I had to come to terms with that a couple of years ago because I was like, I've been living this way for 30 years. I wrote the book on happiness. Why do I still have these thoughts? <laughs> right. <laughs> Duh. Like I'm something special, right? <laughs> There's nothing special about me. Of course, I still have these thoughts because, duh, wake up, you're human. Yeah, I do you're that. Human. You know, I'm the gratitude addict, right? Gratitudeaddict.com. Why <laughs> days the gratitude is difficult to come by, but of course, sometimes we take a step back and that's yeah. okay. And then we just keep, you know, trying again tomorrow, right? I honestly have to tell you, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed today and it took me <laughs> hours upon hours to just shift my, and I was like, oh, I had, I had a podcast episode at 1230 with somebody who she's a professional ice dancer and I'm an ice dancer and I could, and I was just like, not even really looking forward to it. And I had to like really psych myself up and I'm, you know, you can't, your, your mind is going to say what's wrong with me, or your mind is going to say all these other things, but you have to get into the practice of making those shifts. So right. I go to Hawaii this year. And I had listened to a couple of podcasts with Dr. Joe Vitale. He was from mm -hmm. The Secret. Um, I had downloaded an audiobook of his. I hadn't had a chance to read it. And I'm in Hawaii. And I was like, I'm looking through my audiobooks. So that's, it's probably on the plane. You know, it's from the East Coast to Hawaii. It's a very, very long trip. Right. So I started listening to this book that I had downloaded months earlier. And it's called Zero Limits um, by Dr. Joe Vitale. And he, I, I was like, oh, I didn't know this. It was all about Ho'oponopono. And I learned about Ho'oponopono back in 2006. Meditation. Right. Well, and it's, 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 or like a, it's a mantra. mantra. It's a mantra. Right. Right. Like it's an affirmation that you say. Yeah. And it is the most powerful tool for self-forgiveness. But it also does wonders on everything else around you. Can you right. repeat for, for our viewers? It, it's something yes. like, I love you. Um, I'm sorry. Something like that. Can you say what the Ho'oponopono is? Yes. So you say, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And thank you. Thank you. Right. So when you say, I love you, that is your saying to the universe, to God, to, to creator, whatever you call that. I love you is expressing that love that you have for higher power, whatever it is that you call it, just fill in the blank. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. I'm sorry. You know, you're saying, okay, I, I'm, I said this or I did that, you know, whatever you're apologizing because that's expressing, you know, you're owning what happened. Like you're owning that, that error, whatever, please forgive me. You're asking for forgiveness from the universe from everybody. And then thank you is expressing your gratitude. Because that's the most important part. Is I think I misspelled that, but it's okay. Ho oponopono. Oh, yeah. Um, but and you can even Google Dr. Joe Vitale, Google the book Zero Limits. He goes into detail about it. I'm telling you, this is so powerful that I can't even tell you 
the things that have happened in my life since I started practicing this on a daily basis. Because I think in 2006, I probably wasn't ready to hear it. And that's okay, because not, we're not always ready to hear the messages that were being sent. And it's okay. Right. If you're not ready for it today, it's going to come back up at some point, that's right. and then you'll be ready for it. I, I was ready for it. I have been practicing this Ho'oponopono every minute of the day, every time I think about it, since third week of March and I can't tell you how just I feel good just I won't get into too much woo-woo about it because no, people are going to think I'm wacky but every day in the group <laughs> at, at three o'clock eastern I, I post I call them breath breaks but I do like a I post a YouTube meditation that's five minutes or less so gang if you're in attitude of gratitude with chronic pain tomorrow's breath break is going to be a hoponopono um, I know the honest guys who's one of one of the guys that I, uh, I like meditation guys. They've got a really great one. So what a good tip and interesting to know that it had such a profound effect on you. Um, it's yeah, so and like I'm not living. I have to be honest with all the folks out there. I've never lived with chronic pain and I'm so grateful for that. However, the mental pain that I've endured. <laughs> It's like, yeah. I like, you know, you can't have both. So I, you know, I've had the mental pain um, and it's, you know, I mean, it's just very manageable. You know, I have PTSD because of my brother, um, but it's very manageable because I've worked on it for so many years. I mean, my brother died in 1978, so I've had right. that many years to work on it, and it just takes time and patience. And yeah, you know. I I use pain kind of in air quotes because obviously, no, I know. you know, in my group we we're not solving the physical part. And, and, you know, I like how in your book you talk about um, we're so much alike in so many ways, but you're like, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a therapist. That's me. I've just, but I've lived on this earth for 52 years and I've lived through my own rock bottom and stuff. So I share my experience and hope to help people with it. And that's right. exactly what you do. Um, but um you know, but it's the, but people living with chronic pain, 90 something percent of the time we live with emotional pain okay. with it. And there aren't any doctors that talk to you about that. None. And that's kind of my mission is to help people to deal with the emotional pain because it's like we're thrown into expert mode without ever having, you know, been given a beginner's mode. We just don't know what to do. So, so that's what I try to solve um, with, you know, the, the broadcast and, and my group and all that. But the Hoponopono prayer, what a great idea. Um, good tool to, to offer us with forgiveness. And you, yeah, and it's, it's just so simple. It is. And like, even if you don't want to research Ho'oponopono and you don't want to read about it, you want to learn about it, just say those four words, those four statements. Can you say them one more time, please? Yes. It's, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. So it, don't even worry about where it comes from. I'm just telling you, it's very powerful. Yeah. You say it to yourself. You think it to yourself. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And like for me, there's, there's a lot of times where I have anxiety that pops up. Usually it's about my son. Um, part of my PTSD is um, because my brother died when I was 12 years old and now mm -hmm. I have a son. Mm -hmm. I'm always worrying about him. Mm -hmm. In fact, and, when you start the book, you just let him off at college. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. I've been there. <laughs> and you get these thoughts that just pop in. And it's always, like, really dark. <laughs> I kind of be honest. And I just have to sit there. My heart starts racing. I just sit there and close my eyes. And I just start repeating it over and over until it dissipates. Because I can't go there. Because all you're doing when... Things like that, I call making up a story in your head. All mm -hmm. you're doing when you're projecting or you're, you're worrying about something that hasn't happened, you know, a scenario, oh, he's out, you know, he's driving home from college. Oh my gosh, you know, he's going to get in a car accident. You know, I can't go there. So, but it happens a lot for me mm -hmm. because it's part of my PTSD. Sure. Yep. And so I just sit there and I just repeat it over and over and over. And it just really calms me down. And what a great tip. <sighs> okay. Let me move on with my day. You know, I don't, I don't, I can't go there. Yeah. And then a couple of years ago, you also had um, another ex experience with your, your ex-husband. Mm. Um, you had trauma. Do you want to share about that a little sure. bit? Yeah. Yeah. It was 2013. Um, 
my son, the interesting thing here is that my brother died two weeks before I turned 13. And what I'm about to tell you happened two weeks after my son turned 13. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and it's just bizarre. Um, so my ex-husband is very, very high powered attorney, award-winning lawyer in his field. Um, was, uh, and this was after we were divorced, thankfully. Um, he was, it was like one o'clock in the morning and he was pulling into McDonald's to get a cheeseburger. And he had been out drinking at the bars on a Saturday night and he was turning, making a left-hand turn and a motorcycle came flying around the corner and the motorcycle clipped him as he was pulling in and two people died. And um, so long story short, he ended up serving seven years in prison. And it was just, it was just very surreal that I live in Loudoun County, Virginia, which is the wealthiest county in America. Not me, just everybody else around me. <laughs> <laughs> Loudoun County is where AOL is headquartered. There's a lot of high tech companies. So a lot of my neighbors are people that sold high tech companies and have millions sitting in the bank, you know, that kind of thing. It was very difficult for my son. He wasn't born with a, with a silver spoon in his mouth, but he was born a wealthy kid. You know, we weren't billionaires by any stretch of, we weren't even millionaires, but we were very, very well off. So my son, you know, this was just a huge stigma for him. And mm -hmm. I didn't know how, how, how I was going to handle it. I was like, how do I do this? And my best, best friend just said, Sandy, everything you've been through, all these years of therapy and life coaching and self-help books and workshops and seminars, like everything that I've done has led me up to that point. And now, you know, I was left with being a single mother. And granted, I walked away from nothing in my marriage. I had very little alimony. I walked away. It was not a good situation for me. I don't talk about it because I have a very, very good relationship with my ex-husband. It just was not serving me. And I had been in that marriage for 21 years. And so I walked away from it. And all of a sudden, I had been out of the workforce for, for over 10 years. I had to go back to work, get a full-time job. That's why I went back to college and got my bachelor's degree oh, because right. I, yeah, because I was in management. And if I wanted to continue getting paid as a manager, I had to have a degree and I didn't have a degree. It didn't, it, it depends on the market that you live in. I'm in the Washington DC metro area. So you have to have a college degree. Yeah. There's no, like, there's no two ways about it. Right. So that's why I, I ended up, it was my, my $55,000 insurance policy <laughs> <laughs> that I need to have this just in case because I'm a single mother and I have to do this. Um, so yeah, it was a really tough time. I mean, you know, my son is fine. He's in college. He's a junior in college now. My ex-husband got out of prison in December of 2021, just a few months ago. And um, he's doing great. He yeah. and I have you couldn't, I mean, they probably should do a movie about this because I don't know how many people are divorced and go through all this. We just had lunch on Sunday. Oh, it was that's supposed, nice. to be, supposed to be my mom, my son, and my ex-husband because my ex-husband has no family. He looks at my mom like his own mom. They're mm -hmm. very close. So we were just, it was just supposed to be the four of us. And then my ex, you know, he has a girlfriend. He said, well, can Kim come with us? I'm like, of course. Well, then I was like, well, I'm going to invite my husband, Brian. So I invited Brian. And then my <laughs> sister was like, well, I want to see Brandon, my son. And he's, my other sister was like, well, I want to go. So we ended up having a table for eight for brunch on Sunday. And my mom, oh, cool. I'm, I'm taking her. She's like, now, what's the occasion today? Why is there a table? And I go, we're just here to see Brandon. <laughs> it's like for the first time, he's not with me. He's living with his dad this summer. It's really hard because sure he's home from college and he's not with me. He's with his dad, but I'm so grateful that he gets to be with his dad because yeah. they haven't lived together in seven years. Um, but what you know, you're telling me, like with the divorce and, and, you know, your husband's very heartbreaking mistake and, you know, right. I, I, that could have been me. I know, you know, my, that's, that's, you're embodying forgiveness, you know, mm -hmm. with your, 
the dissolution of your marriage and then his mistake and all of that. And there, there you are at, you know, Sunday brunch all together. So you're really, you practice practice what you preach you you really do. walk the walk and I say that to people I don't know if they believe it but I I mean I truly do I have an open book I have nothing to hide my ex and I we talk a couple times a week we're like love you love you you know mm-hmm. we're like brother and sister we even like after the brunch he was like that was so much fun I'm like I am so happy we all get along yeah and like me and his girlfriend and for your son too that must be a big big deal well it's a, it's an example Yes. I'm setting the example that, yes, your dad and I once truly loved each other. I still love him dearly. I'm not in love with him, right. but I love him and he loves me and we love you. And, you know, but it's like, it's, it's like one step further. Like I love his girlfriend. Like I could oh, hang out with her every day. Nice. Like we get along so great. We, we want to plan family vacation. She's got three kids. We were joking. We're like, okay, next it's going to be a table for 11 so that she can bring her three kids and all of us can just be there. And I mean, it's just how, how it doesn't get better than that. It doesn't. And you, I, obviously I love your book. I highlighted many things, but you talk about (laughs) negative people and holding bitterness. Um, Mm -hmm. You say in one, in, part on negativity and unhappiness. Actually, I think I may have even made a quote about it. Let's see. Here it is. Look at this. If negative people could learn to change their perspective on things, they would enjoy life altering effects. And then you go on to say negative thinking, even if you do not verbalize the negative thoughts will still lower your energy for sure. Um, And it's true. And talk, talk about hanging out with negative people. And that's something that You know, my group isn't for everybody because we don't allow complaining in the group itself. We have, you know, live chats that we can, we do that. But in the group, we don't because there's a million other groups where you can complain and do whatever. And they just, you know, they serve a purpose. Mine just, sometimes you need a sanctuary, right? You need to get away from all that negativity. Yes. And I also want to say that, you know, changing your perspective is huge and I kind of feel like when you, because we all need to express our feelings. Right. And you need to do that. For me personally, I do not feel that expressing those opinions is, I don't feel that social media is the best place to do it. Right. And let me tell you why. Because when we are expressing all of that, And please don't hate me, anybody, for saying this, but I'm going to be brutally honest here. Okay. I need to be brutally honest. When you are, you're, you're being a victim. It's a victim mentality. I'm not, I'm not dismissing anyone's pain or misery. It's real and you need to feel it. However, by doing it on social media, what are we looking for? We're looking for comments. We're looking for validation. We're, you don't need any of those things. Totally, totally agree. You don't need those things. Right. So instead, find somebody that shares your common problem and have a conversation over coffee and talk about it and do a, you know, have diarrhea of the mouth right. and spill it. Social media is not the place to do it. It's not because you can go on and say, oh, my elbow and this, and this is what my blood work says and all that stuff. And you're looking for, you're you're looking looking for people to say, oh, right. No, you're looking for a pity party. I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be brutal. And no, no, you're not. But I need to be honest because that's a really stay in that victim mode. You're going to be a victim. Yeah. And if you want to heal and truly be empowered, feel the feelings. Absolutely. You have to feel it. You can't shove it aside. And I was on a podcast. I was in a guest on a podcast yesterday and I was like, and it came back down to gratitude. You, you can gratitude your way out of any feeling. Hmm. I like that. I'm writing that down. I love that. You can (laughs) gratitude your way out of any feeling you want. It's going to work a thousand percent every single time. Yeah. Every single time. But here's the difference. If you really want to create lasting change, you have to feel the feeling. So you feel the feeling. 
you practice forgiveness, you forgive. You work on acceptance, you work on trust, trusting without any expectations. And when you've gone through all of that, then you focus on gratitude. Now, in a pinch, I'm stressed out. I've got things to do and I'm feeling something. I'm like, okay, gratitude, focus on gratitude, right? Yeah, it gets me, it brings me from here to here and that's what we want. But those feelings are still going to be there and you have to deal with them at some point. Sure. Because they're going to keep showing up. And gratitude is, it's the most amazing tool ever. It's just before you start focusing on that, there's all these other little things you got to do to really clear that energy and clear those feelings and and feel it and be with it and sit in it. No. Yeah. Before you focus on that. One of my favorite words you, you just mentioned is acceptance. You know, we, acceptance we can't move forward without acceptance and we don't have to like what we're accepting right but we do have to accept it you know we can it's it's the crashing of the waves that we talked about we can go with the waves or we can say no i don't like this pain or whatever we don't i don't like this pain i'm gonna stand here because i don't like it and the waves are gonna crash on you just right. you know but if you go with it life is gonna be a bit easier um yeah. No, the, I, I totally agree with you about the social media thing. There's a time and a place, there you is. know, and, that, and that's why we offer the Zoom chats or whatever for people right. twice a week so they can, you know, meet in yeah. small groups and talk to people. And but that's important. And on social media is, right. is, yeah, that's a good point. It's so important to talk to people who understand what you're going through. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I just feel like, I don't know, I'm, I'm. I love social media and it, we need social media. It's great in so many ways. I just don't think anybody should be airing their dirty laundry in in posts. And, you know, that's just my personal opinion, you know, save it, save it. Because once it's out there, it's always out there. Yeah. And it's just a negativity that you're putting into the world. It's better to just talk about it, feel it, deal with it and then move on. Such a good point, Sandy. You're you're giving us so many good food for thought um, tonight. So we're here. If you're joining us late, we're here with America's Happiness Coach, Sandy Scarlotta. If you guys have any questions or comments at all for Sandy, uh, things that you know you're having hurdles that you're trying to get over, she has a wonderful podcast which I was a guest on, and I, I po- yeah. did post it in the group. Um, it's called Happiness Solved. It's a weekly. You you. You put them out weekly, yes? Your I actually have two episodes a week. Oh, well, look two at episodes you. Are now. It is now rated the number 10 happiness podcast, the top 10 happiness podcast. So I'm very thrilled about that. You should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a great, great podcast. And you had a guest on a couple months ago, Lauren, something that she was really great. Um, it's yes, that was you. <laughs> <laughs> She was amazing. Um, <laughs> let me get to some of these comments here. I'm also a recovering Catholic, but very much a Christian. Good Mary. Perfect. Um, awesome. So, J- Jeanette Martin, Master Connector. Love that. The, this progress is a game changer. Awesome. Jane Martin, mental pain people, mental pain people don't talk about. You're right, Jane. Absolutely. <clears throat> they don't. And that's why yeah. I want to get it out there. Um we finally figure out that forgiveness is for us and not for them. Right. That is right. And you talk about that in the book too. Make sure. Um, so Facebook users coming up because you did, you're you watching from inside the group and you didn't sign in. If you want to win a copy of the book, just write in hashtag gratitude, but you have to be signed in if you're watching from in the group. Um, and if you don't want to sign in, I, there's a whole, if you look on the featured thing at the top of the group, there's a whole slew of other places you can watch this. Um, let's see. No one gives us an owner's manual or user's guide, just a diagnosis or three. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> glad you're here. Sorry, I'm behind you guys. Headline thinking. Four phrases. So easily heard, but so hard to say. See, this is what happens when I get behind on the comments. Um, four phrases. Yeah. So, oh, probably the Ho'oponopono. The Ho'oponopono. Oh, it, it's hard. Write down those four lines. I love you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Please forgive me and thank you. And because there's, because let me be honest about that. There's some times where I'm not, I'm not there, but I know I need to do it. And I will sit there 
and I, and I'm very in touch with my feelings and I can say things and I'm not feeling it. And I will just sit there and keep repeating it until I finally feel it. Because for me, I feel it right here around my heart center. And so when I keep repeating it, all of a sudden I start to feel this warm and fuzzy feeling. And I'm like, okay, here we go. It's working. That's where I feel too. There, there, and the yeah. throat chakra. Well, our throat chakra can close up. And I'm not, I mean, I'm a Reiki master teacher 10 years ago. So I don't, I don't work with chakras. I'm very familiar with them, but I, I am familiar enough to, to just say this is that when you're feeling it angst right here, it's because you're not speaking your voice and you mm. need to be, you need to be, you know, saying something. Interesting. There's something you're not saying that you need to say. Interesting. Who knew I yeah. didn't talk enough. I'll have to tell my husband that he'll love that. <laughs> <laughs> I learned I'm not talking enough. So. <laughs> <laughs> um jane says forgive yourself absolutely and facebook users says, agree not on social media and um ftf refers to flush the format which is our zoom chats i was just talking about shelter okay. from the storm i know that is um jill i think because i think she said that yesterday um suzanne yes like it or not we have to have acceptance for sure Oh, good question. Can the four phrases help me forgive myself? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And here's the thing. If you, if you do decide to study Ho'oponopono, it's an ancient healing modality. Um, I don't know when they started using it in Hawaii. Um, but what they believe is that everything is sacred. So if you ever get to be blessed enough to go to Hawaii, they look at all of this as sacred ground. Everything is sacred. So what Dr. Hu Lin, um, I think I just said his name right. He's the one that introduced this to Dr. Joe Vitale. He says that you need to, he calls it cleaning. So that there's, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. You're cleaning. That's what they call it. So anything that pops up, you need to clean. He's like, you need to clean your phone. You need to clean your coffee cup. Like, because everything is energy and you need to clean it all. Like before you sit down in a chair, you need to clean it. Well, <laughs> I don't go that far. There's times I forget. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I don't go that far, although I do believe that everything is energy. Um, we're energy being, everything is energy. You know, my reading glasses are, it's, an, it's, it's all energy. There the way it started in Hawaii was that he was a psychiatrist for a criminally insane mental hospital on the big island in Hawaii. I think it was the big island. Yeah, University of Hawaii. He, they ended up closing the hospital and 25 people were completely healed and he never talked to one person face to face. So what he did was he reviewed the medical charts and he would read them. And as he was looking at them, he would go through, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank uh. you. This was a facility where paint was chipping off the walls. Every time they repainted, the paint would chip off. The employees wouldn't show up for work. Everybody was calling. It was like a disaster area. Once he started, it started all of a sudden, the paint would show up, plants would live, people would show up to work, they had more, more staff than they knew what to do wow. with, people were getting healthy. So this whole ward was closed. And this was 20 some years ago, they've never had to reopen it. So he actually healed 25 medically or criminally insane people just by going through this. So it's very powerful. I've noticed some physical things. I won't go into details. I've noticed some physical things that I was having um, with my skin and I would like put lotion on. And as I'm putting lotion on, I'm like, you know, saying the, the thing and things have not appeared. That's a cut from my dog, my puppy. But I would get these red blotches, like really bad red blotches. Um, and they, they've been gone since I got back from Hawaii. Wow. Um, and, and I'm like, all right, let me show you this picture. Because 
when I was coming back from Hawaii, I had my laptop and a bunch of books and stuff in my backpack. And as I was putting it back on three times, this wrist rubbed really, the backpack rubbed really hard against my wrist. And um, this is what my wrist looked like when I got back from Hawaii. And my stepdaughters were like, you need to go to the doctor. I'm like, this happens all the time. It's been happening for a few years. I don't know if it's, um, you know, menopause related or what the deal is. Now, if I can find it on my phone, oy vey, oy vey. It's one of these pictures that's hard to see because, oh my God, I can't believe I don't see it. Maybe I deleted it. But anyway, I would have these. Maybe you cleaned your phone. I think I cleaned my phone. <laughs> it was a huge red spot right here on my wrist. It was about this big. And anytime like the dog leash would hit my hand, I'd have a red spot. It looked like that gone I don't have any I, like none of them have shown up so anyway that's my woo woo I didn't yeah. want to talk about no that's all right you never might have do you know the the book hidden messages in water I don't know if I know that Masaro Emoto or something like that it's older book maybe 10 years old or something like that but he he um you know he says we're we're made up of like I don't know, 90 something percent water and right. he was he was studying under a microscope like the way water and ice crystals formed when it was put by certain words. Oh, yes, I do know this. And yes. like gratitude made this most gorgeous um, ice formation. Oh, it's right. Of course, I've got it right here. Hidden messages in water. Um, but like, you know, words like hate and stuff, they water behaved very differently than, yes. than from the fascinating. And what you're telling me with the Ho'oponopono is kind of similar that that uh, you know our energy the words we put out there and and like your quote says whether or not we say them um you know will still you know affect our energy that's well cool. and everything we're, it's all related you know the thoughts you're thinking is going to affect your physical well-being there's, yeah. there's no two ways about it if you're an angry person you're going to have major health issues. Yeah. It's going to, it's going to external materialize in some way. It does. Um, and I'm just like, like I said, you know, stay tuned. You can check back in with me for a year. Yeah. But I literally would have multiple red blotches. Like the people are like, Oh my God, are you okay? Is that skin cancer? And I'm like, no, it just goes away. I, yeah. I bruise easily. I'm very fair. I bruise easily. I don't have any, I don't have any on my body. Like, that's amazing. Yeah, like this is literally a cut from my, that the, we're fostering a puppy and that's a cut from my puppy that we're fostering, but I have no other. I mean, it's for two years, I've had these blotches. That's oh. amazing. Whatever. We are going to check. Call me cray cray. You can call me cray cray no, if you want. No, believe me. Like I would never go, I would never be so bold as to say that gratitude has solved my chronic pain, but it sure has helped. It, it really is, has helped. I'm not saying it's going to, cure anybody no, all i'm no, saying is that i think it will help yeah and, and i you're I not the first that. person that said that about that hopono pono um you know obviously i mean many many people thousands of people yeah um do it millions even so that's fascinating and you know any any little tool and that's what you offer not only in your book but in your podcast twice a week you offer different tools to help us to you know some i i like to say and we said it in the rooms of aa like take what you want and leave the rest right so you know maybe you find that this tool works for you and this works exactly. for you but maybe this one doesn't yep. whatever you put out there you know you just never know you just never know when things can help somebody yeah and you find what works for you right and like i said i was introduced to this in 2006 here we are in 2022 halfway through the year and i'm reintroduced again and now it makes sense to me. Yeah. I wasn't ready for it then. Now I am. And it's okay. Yeah. yeah. Things do. I, you're right. I think things do find us when they're supposed to. I, I haven't done a Ho'oponopono in a very long time. And now that you're presenting it, you know, now I'm thinking, all right, maybe it's my time to uh, yeah. start revisiting it. I will definitely make it our breath break tomorrow. Who else we got here? Pamela Creighton. I have noted lots of empaths have gravelly voices and believe it's from blocked throat chakras suppressing self 
Interesting, Pamela. I was just thinking about you, Pamela, today. I'm wondering, I haven't seen your name in a while, so I'm glad you're here. Um, love Sandy and her message. Hey, Arlene. Thank you, Arlene. Glad you're here. Um, we still have a couple minutes, so make sure you get in hashtag gratitude. I see Linda Canalicchio's put it in there. Hey, Linda. Um, if you want to win a copy of her wonderful book, Happiness Solved. Oh, tell, tell everybody what the 100 steps means. Okay, so as you mentioned, Lauren, I grew up on the Severn River outside of Annapolis, and there was 100 steps from the river dock up to the house. And every time I climbed those steps, I guess it was because I was an athlete, it was like my happy place. But it was also like there was a sense of, you know, challenge, accomplishment. I would hear the, the Rocky song, you know, da da da, you know, <laughs> as I was climbing those stairs. And when I was 12 years old, it was right before my 13th birthday, I was with a girlfriend and I was brought home by boat. And I got to the top, she and I got to the top of the steps. My father dismissed her, said, please leave. And he told me that my brother died. And so it's kind of a metaphor that ever, and I didn't know this until I started writing the book, but I've always wanted to get back to the place of happiness that I felt when I was climbing the hundred steps. Cause here's the thing, I made up a story. We all make up stories. I made up a story that I could not allow myself to be happy because if I did, then something tragic would happen. And I still, it pops up and I have to like go through, you know, so when you say I walk the walk, I literally do walk the walk. I walk <laughs> Cause it's like, I mean, I'm like a total work in progress. Like every day, like I have stuff come up you know, the PTSD is so powerful. Um, and I always worry that somebody's going to die. Like I go through that almost every single day. Oh, sure. Who's going to die? Who's going to die today? Granted, I haven't had anything really tragic happen since I was 12 years old. You know, yes, my father That's died. Enough. You know, I had my father pass away. I've had my mother-in-law, my father, you know, and those are very, very sad, but they were elderly people that you expect. Like it's expected, right? right? Of course. Thank God, knock on wood, you know, I haven't had anything tragic happen since then, but I still go through that. Of course. And I have to just, you know, so for me, it's a survival mechanism that I, I have to find ways every single day to switch my thinking because I would not accomplish anything in my life if, yeah. if, if left to my own devices to, you know, living with PTSD. Yeah. You know? Um, and I think a lot of us go through similar stuff, you know, different circumstances, of course, but we're always waiting for that other shoe to drop, right. or we're afraid to get our hopes up, um, because we've been let down so many times before, perhaps a new doctor, a new treatment or whatever that just didn't work out. We're afraid to get our hopes up. So we right. don't let ourselves go there and we don't let ourselves enjoy the moment because we're always looking towards that next moment without embracing, you know, the current moment that they're that we're in and the joy that we're in so there there's a lot of that but but i mean going through that tragedy at such a young age it's obviously very understandable and ironically i've found that the you know over the last eight years i've been working with people with chronic pain and illness many 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 have ptsd or childhood trauma of some kind it's very interesting well Here's the thing. So I started working, you know, we were talking about things will happen when we're ready. And I know we're almost out of time. Yeah. Um, the teacher will, will appear when the student is ready. Yeah. And that just happened for me recently. And I started working with this woman who is helping me to rewrite some of the stories of various things that happened when I was a child. Um, and what it's done for me is it has enabled me to wake up every day not carrying the weight because when the situation happens we make a judgment or we make a predetermination about what's happening because of things that happened in our past things that happened in our childhood and we and when you rewrite those stories and change the story around it things show up for me now as neutral hmm. there's no emotion i think of uh, like something happens where normally I would make a judgment or I would, you know, react a certain way. And now it's like, Oh, 
it is what it is. It's just neutral. And it's just interesting because this is all happening in the past couple of months. And I'm like every day I show up in a very neutral um, way of thinking where there's no judgment. There's no right. making up a story. It's just, okay, yeah, it happened. It is what it is. You you talk a lot about judgment, not judging others in your book, mm -hmm. which I, I really appreciate that because it, it can be difficult to overcome that knee-jerk reaction to judge. Yeah. Um, but it, it really is important to focus on our own our own inner workings and stop worrying about everybody else, right? Exactly. Happiness. Absolutely. Um, gang, for more about Sandy, her books, her her podcast, go to sandyscarlotta.com. I'll have it in the show notes too. You can find out, you know get a copy of her book and we're going to give away a copy of the book. And I kept forgetting to say, and hopefully the, the book, the free signed book is only for people that live in the United States. So hopefully yeah. our winner lives in the, um, in the U S so let's give away a copy. Let me pull up the screen again, since I knocked myself out of the broadcast and had to, um, <laughs> I want to tell you, I'm still struggling with my dyslexia and, and, and like which side, I'm on here when I'm looking at the screen. So <laughs> Lauren and I were laughing about that. I'll just talk while you're looking for this. We were laughing about that before it started. I'm like, I go to touch um, this side it. of my head, but I'm touching this. Like, I, I like can't figure it out because <laughs> it's like the reverse. <laughs> I know. You think after all this time, I would know it. All I right. <laughs> Let's give away a copy of the book for, let's see. Good luck, everybody. Oh, how do you do that? You have like a whole thing. Oh, Christine. Christine yeah. Lai. Yeah, it's through StreamYard. They have this giveaway tool. Congratulations, really? Christine. I know for a fact that Christine is in the United States. So, Christine, um, I believe I have your address. I will get that to Sandy. Congratulations. Yeah, so send me the address, Christine. Um, and um, I will get the book out in the next couple of days. I actually have one other one I'm here waiting to send. So I will wonderful. put that out in the morning. You will love it, right Christine. Away. And for those of you that um, would like, again, her website, Sandy's website, you can find it. It's also on Amazon. Sandy, thank you so, so much for being here. This was a fantastic episode. I could have talked to you for seven hours I know, I know. longer, but I'm glad we finally got to do this. Me too, Lauren. Thank you so much. And to everybody out there, you know, my wish for you is that whatever you're going through, you will reach a point where you will say, this has happened for me and not to me. Love that. Love that. What a great message to end on. If you guys are looking for a new podcast to listen to, believe me, you want to watch or listen rather to Happiness Solved. It's wonderful. So thank you, gang. Thanks for the live viewers. Thank if you. you're watching recorded, thank you also. And I will see you next week. Peace mm -hmm. and love. Get your gratitude on. Thanks thank again, you. Sandy. Thank you, Lauren. Let's see if I do the closing. I always forget to do the closing. All right, here we go. Bye, gang. <laughs>